gentlemen, it's the one and only Dog Waters, and I'm back with another exciting episode. And I don't even know what I'm going to call like my interviews because I haven't really came and figured out a name for it. I mean, you guys can help me. It could be like Into the Dog Waters, Swimming in the Dog Waters, Scuba Diving in the Dog Waters. I don't know. I, I, you guys help me figure out a name for it because eventually I'm supposed to be doing some of this stuff on the podcasting platforms, but I don't know. I'm not sure. You help me figure it out. But nonetheless, I'm back and I have another phenomenal interview with you for you guys. And I think we're going to enjoy this conversation. But before we start anything, you guys know I start everything off with prayer. So everybody take a moment of silence to pray with me and listen carefully. Most gracious Heavenly Father, you are King of Kings and Lords of Lords. You are the Lord of hosts. You are the mighty El Shaddai. You are Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I come before everyone publicly acknowledge you and acknowledge that this is your altar and that this business is dedicated to you. I thank you for the blessings that you've given me. I thank you for the trials and tribulations that I've been through that have taught me so many valuable lessons. I thank you for removing people out of this business that should not be here and bringing new people in that should be here. I want to say that uh, you are gracious and you are merciful and your mercy endures forever. And I'm thankful for it. I want to pray a blessing over everybody who's listening to this 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 interview right now. Lord, there's a lot of going on in people's lives, people losing their jobs, um, families that are trying to be broken apart, uh, people who are in pain because of death of loved ones and loss of family members. And one thing I've learned is that over time, you know, when these things happen, Satan and his minions t- tend to pile on. And they take one thing and turn it into two and two into four and four into eight and 16 and 24 and it just it just pounds people down so i ask that you minister to people's spirits and their souls and that you help them through their troubling and trying times you are a god who loves backsliders and takes people back so if anyone turns their face back towards you heavenly father i am 100 percent confident you will take them back in with open arms and i thank you more than anything i want to say thank you for uh just being who you are and thank you for allowing me to get to know you as who you are and teaching me more and more about you every day. And it's my sincere wish and desire that we as people learn more and that this podcast be used to teach people more. All these things I ask in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I plead the blood of Jesus over this prayer and all petitions within this prayer. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So now let's get down to it. Let's start off here. I'm riding around in a car, I believe, and um, you know how you don't, you're not supposed to be looking at the phone when you're in the car. First of all, don't do what I do. I'm looking down, and I'm scrolling through YouTube, and I, I, I see the Silver Pill podcast. I want to say it was on YouTube. Don't, and I'm pretty sure it was. And I take a quick listen, and I hear these two guys talking, and literally the Holy Spirit says, I want you to have those guys on. So I take a copy of the link from the YouTube, I shoot it to West. West, get these guys on, and I forget about it because it's so much stuff that goes on, I forget. Nonetheless, we end up at this moment when the three of us are here to hold a conversation. So I have Harrison on with me and Lowell on with me from Silver Peel Podcast, and I just butchered his name because I'm from New Orleans. But I'm excited about this conversation. And gentlemen, I hope all is going well, and how are you doing this lovely evening? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you oh, so yeah. much for having us on. Yeah, thank you. We're I'm doing doing just fine. Guys, I'm excited to get into this conversation. And we kind of framed the conversation in a pre-interview where we we're going to talk about um, three topics. Guys, so you, here's what you guys can expect. We're going to talk about Wookiees because they have another name for it. I call it a Wookiee because what he described me was a freaking Wookiee from Star Wars. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to start talking about the hitchhiker effect. And then we're going to have a little light discussion on how much of this stuff in a cryptic community is demonic and how much of it isn't demonic. I think it's going to be a very exciting podcast, a very exciting show. So without any further ado, let's get into it, guys. I got to hit you guys with my number one question. All my data points show that people who are in this field and there are influencers in this field, there's some moment in time in their childhood or in their young adulthood when you're like, you know, 12 through 18, where they had some kind of paranormal encounter that piqued their interest and made them look at this. And I'm always searching to figure out what happened that got pe- people involved in this. So how did you guys first 
come to start paying attention to this stuff because it's really really a small segment of you know society that digs into these holes that we're in how did you guys get here uh, I, i'm gonna have to blame my father our father um <clears throat> we were raised christian but our dad was always telling us ghost stories and half the books he owned were about bigfoot so we just kind of grew up that way I, we did have experiences um Paranormal experiences, I think that separately, I don't think we ever had anything together. But what do you think, Lowell? Yeah, yeah, it would definitely be dad. He's the one who kind of, I don't want to say encouraged us, but he never discouraged us. He was always um, supportive as we questioned stuff like Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. And um, he never just came out and be like, well, that's not true. You know, that's that's not real. You'd always say, "Well, look at look up for yourself. Go go find out for yourself, and tell me what you think later on." Do you um, guys think he had any encounters or experiences? Ask him, you guys are using past tense. Did your dad pass away or something? Oh no, okay. no, he's he's a very quiet man. He doesn't talk very much. <clears throat> now that we started the podcast, it's it's funny. He's told me stories that he had when he was younger that Lowell didn't hear, and he's had stories with Lowell that I never heard. So. <laughs> So dad is the one who saw stuff and it has shifted his belief and he understands that it's there. And so when you guys start digging into it, he was like, yeah, I've seen stuff. So I know it's there. See, it's always a, a impetus or a starting point for this. And that's a beautiful thing. So then talk to me about how you guys decided to start doing your own podcast. When did that start? Actually, at pretty much the beginning of this year, we've, we've always kind of toyed with the notion. The reason we started it was because our wives were kind of getting sick of us being on the phone for hours talking about this stuff. And they finally said, why don't you guys just start a podcast and, and be done with it? So we, we just kind of did that. <laughs> so you got the wives supporting this, bro. You guys are in a good position. And they like, stop <laughs> right. talking and do something with it. huh? If you don't spend hours talking about it, make some money off of it to do something. That's awesome, bro. That's absolutely awesome. All right. Well, with that being said, let's talk, jump into the topics. You guys were going to explain to me about these Wookiees. When you, when you told me about it, I was like, okay, that's a Star Wars Wookiee. And you were saying this was a phenomenon that was happening in Pennsylvania. Walk me through that because I'm not familiar with it. Okay, yeah, they're they're called the Albatwitch, and it's kind of a, a Pennsylvania Dutch belief. Um, they're about three and a half to four foot tall, uh, hair covered, uh, real skinny, um, kind of like a, a miniature Bigfoot looking creature. Um, and they were known to uh, actually steal like picnic baskets and apples and all sorts of stuff from from passerbyers. This is back in eighteen uh, hundreds. It's kind of when this hit its biggest uh, peak, I guess. A lot of the stories are from the 1800s. Um, they're still spotted today. There's actually even a festival that goes on back there for them. Um, just a bunch of people getting together and talking about it. Um, so they're, they're kind of an interesting creature. They were known to be uh, very territorial, territorial and pretty fierce. Um, and they would, I mean, even they're... They share a lot with the Bigfoot. Even some people say they can like appear shadowy or cloaky, cloaking, mm -hmm. um, and they they can communicate by slapping rocks together or whistling. So I'm Do not they sure. Tell you, has anybody described the type of eye shine that they have? You've seen or heard anything about the color? Is it green? Um, no, I don't think I've ever heard of of eye shine from them. I wouldn't. From the stories that I heard, there's only two reports current eyewitness reports of them everything else is from like old newspapers so there's only two current eyewitness reports and they both claim to have glowing eyes that's that's as deep as it gets they didn't say what color the glow was though huh no not from my recollection and what area of pennsylvania is this uh chickies rock i don't necessarily know the exact region it's right next to the the swat or the uh, susquehanna river all right, so we're going to put some ads out there. We're going to find out about the Wookiees. We're going to spend some money and advertise out there. And I'll share the, 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 the findings with you guys. You guys can talk to the witnesses, too, because um, because there's this thing, and this is in Oklahoma. Like, there's a couple of places in Oklahoma where people have seen short shadows with green eyes, but they're shadow figures. And then they've seen things that look like a freaking Wookiee 
with green eyes. Like it's a little short, furry, but it's not. They don't describe it as they remember like cousin it that thing that had all the fur on it, and uh, it's like that, but it's got yeah. it's got that the hair doesn't cover the eyes and the nose, but the hair is everywhere else, and it has like the eye shine from a light is green, as opposed hmm. to the shadows having self illuminating flaming green eyes that kind of curve on the outside so um clearly there's something to it is there that area is it known for being like uh any mer- burial mounds or anything like that around it was like native american land or anything like that well that was um inhabited by a, a tribe called the susquehannocks um and they were john smith actually said that they were pretty tall um guessing around seven feet um by the the report but um, and they actually they were supposed to be a very fierce and warlike tribe as well. Um, besides that, that makes sense. That's though. A- okay. Well, tell them tell them the kicker. So the Susquehannocks, allegedly seven foot tall giants, they actually had the the creature the Albatwitch painted on their war shields. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Oh really? So, hmm. What? Well, uh- so you do you guys think that was a form of worship when they put it on their war shield? Because the shield is something used for protection, right? I'm thinking. So, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just saying, if you're putting that on your shield, shield is what you use to protect your body. I'm feeling like they feel like they, these are their protectors. You know, in those days, you worship things that protect you. Now, Native Americans actually had two different forms of shields. They had the war shields, and then they had, um, I guess they call them prayer shields or spirit shields. The spirit shields were used mostly for ceremonies, uh, conjuring up like um, like spirit gods, spirit guides. And then the war shields they would use and they would paint so that the enemy would see the shield first in hopes of scaring the enemy away. And so this was on their war shield or was it on their spirit shields? It was on their war shield. So a seven foot tall giant that was also described with wearing a, a bear head as a necklace or no, as a wolf head as a necklace and what? bears as bracelets um, had an, a four foot tall, like mini Bigfoot on their war shields to scare their, their opposers away. Wait, wait. So we talking about somebody who's seven foot tall, basically a giant with a wolf head as a necklace. Mm-hmm. So a wolf head around your neck, not as like over your head, like a hoodie on your nope. neck and then a bear head on your wrist. Yep, they would they would put their hand through the mouth of the bear. That's the way John Smith described it in his journals. That's 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 crazy. That that that's that's that wow. Bro, like yeah, that would be terrifying. You know what I'm saying for <laughs> real? Like if I'm we just walking through the woods like oh, doo, doo, and then we see a 7 foot tall dude. Yeah, bro. He's probably body painted. You know, I can see that body paint on. You got a wolf around <laughs> your neck. You got a bear head on your arm like Nah, bro, and a big man, that's terrifying. But that's they want you to be more scared of the Alba Twitch on their war shield. Yeah, uh, some 5.56 five, will handle that, though. They ain't going to work right now. <laughs> knock their spine apart. I would knock a spine loose. They'd be like, oh, man, big man just started to shoot you. I'm killing all y'all. You, your bear, your wolf, everybody getting their brains, their wigs split. That's crazy, dude, and I've never heard of this. So we got Native American land with a Native American tribe with – that are giants and i mean a seven foot tall dude could easily whack a bear and definitely can whack a wolf running around with bears and wolves were there any kind of um is the activity around any mounds did did, did, did the research show any burial mounds where the activity was um no i didn't find any burial mounds there um pennsylvania does have some littered around but i don't think there are any in that exact vicinity at least none discovered, obviously. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. That's crazy. I want to hear somebody's report from that area, like an eyewitness encounter. I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm pretty, I'm definitely positive that it's been seen historically. It's being seen now. It seems like everything that people have been seeing in the past, they are currently seeing right now. It's, it's like some freaky, weird, I don't know. I don't know if some kind of freaky, weird portal has been open or or I, I don't know what it is, but people seeing all kinds of crazy stuff. Centaurs, minotaurs. Like, it's just, what what is going on out here in these streets? I haven't been able to figure it out, man. I haven't been able to figure it out, but it's, to me, it's a tad bit terrifying 
even in Africa, I had a guy uh, call me from Nigeria and he was talking about seeing a Jaguar man, dude, dude with a body of a man, but the head of a Jaguar straight oh, up wow. Jaguar, man. I was like, bro, you lying. And he's like, no, I'm not lying to you, James. I'm, you know, I'm not lying. It's the head. And I was like, do you have a photo? And the, the only problem with the photo he had was you saw what clearly what looked like a humanoid body, but it didn't look like no Jaguar head from the back. But the head was down and you saw these huge shoulders that the equivalent of Arnold Schwarzenegger's shoulders. That that dude was big. You know what I'm saying? But oh, wow. I ain't seen no Jaguar head, so I'm not about to tell nobody that. And <laughs> then they'll be like, oh, Doug Waters, you're lying. And no, we just hold on to that one. Um, So the tribe. Is there anything about their warfare and who they conquered and who they fought against that you guys found in the research? Um, there wasn't there wasn't much about this tribe, which was kind of disappointing. Um, they did they were uh, pretty big enemies with the Iroquois Indians in that area, and they think that eventually they weren't a big tribe, and they think eventually the Iroquois um, kind of wiped them out. But there's not much written about him besides that John Smith article. But you know, there's a saying that you know your man by your enemy. So know a man by his enemy. So what about the Iroquois? What were their characteristics? You got to find anything about them? Were they giants as well, or no, nothing? No, they were they were pretty um, normal, I guess, in this in this thing. Um, and they were a pretty big tribe, if memory serves me correct. They kind of went all the way up to uh, Lake Erie, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but that's about it. I don't have much on the Iroquois. So, guys, if you're listening to this interview right now, Wookiees are real. And if they aren't real, real right now, they were real at some point in time because this is a Wookiee. Now, I'm telling you guys, somebody called, somebody else called me about um, these Wookiees. I'm trying, and it wasn't in Oklahoma. It wasn't. See this. I'm just getting a little bit older. It wasn't in Pennsylvania. It was in the Appalachians. I'm pretty sure it was in the Appalachians, because yeah, it was in the Appalachians. Somebody else called me about this, and I didn't believe them because I didn't really. This was two years ago, and so I gotta, I gotta find that guy's number. And I gotta apologize to him because he told me there were little Bigfoots that looked like Wookies, except for yeah. That's exactly what he said. They're a little big for they look like Wookiees. And I was like, man, you lying. And I rarely tell people that stuff, but he sounded like he was drinking. And I was like, bro, you lying to me, man. You lying. Don't, don't be playing with me like that. All right, let's move on to the hitchhiker effect. When I hear the term hitchhiker effect, I always think about someone who decides that they're going to go to a, um, a graveyard or to a Native American burial mound site at night. Or sometimes they just go into the woods and then a spirit follows them home. You guys' research on this is tied into Skinwalker Ranch, is what you were saying? Uh, yeah, that's where I first heard about it, was uh, Skinwalkers at the Pentagon book, written by George Knapp, um, kind of the sequel to the Skinwalker Ranch book he wrote. What's you guys' thoughts on the hitchhiker theory? Uh, uh, go ahead, Lowell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, have, I have mixed feelings about it. Um, it seems that uh, it seems very um, like something's interested in us. Some and somehow they see, are attached to somebody who and actually goes somewhere into a, a physical area. Uh, the Skinwalker Ranch was a big one in that because of the fact that so many people who visited that ranch had a hitchhiker um even even the people on the show today are scared to talk about it because of the fact that they don't they don't want it to happen it's it's the idea of lighting a flame in the paranormal world when you look into it whether you believe in the paranormal or not and the moth on the other side gets attracted to that flame that's kind of my take on it it's Bubble always says it the best way. If you look into it, it's going to look back. Whether that's demonic or not, I can't say. But there is, I do believe that there is something that can become interested in you if you start to pursue that area, whether that be 
opening doors, as they say. Um, I don't think it's playing with a Ouija board. I um, well, there is there is a demonic attachment. There are demonic attachments. We're there can say, be. Yes. 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 We're not saying that there's not. There's definitely demonic attachments, but even stuff. Um, people who have pursued Bigfoot or even seen Bigfoot will come home and then they'll wake up that night or the next day with a Bigfoot peering through their window. Um, something that they didn't even give a thought about and all of a sudden it won't leave them alone. So that's, um, that was, that was kind of something and it. It seems to happen to a lot of the paranormal researchers. So even, uh, but John the odd thing. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, go, go ahead. ahead. The odd thing when it comes to it though, is, it'll affect them in a physical manner, right? Well, like it, it affected, and it wasn't even the paranormal researcher. Some of the times it was the family without it affecting the paranormal researcher. It would affect the family first. Right. Yeah. It would seem to be attracted to the family more than the person. So the person who visited Skinwalker would come back and then his wife would wake up seeing orbs flying around the room or his son would wake up seeing orbs in their room. That would fly around and then leave um and then there's even one where the son saw or the wife his wife saw a dog man standing outside their kitchen window um and then the son saw it as well the same place and then a few days later somebody the son's friend at his school was telling him how he saw a dog man standing outside their window at one point so it seems to jump or spread from one person to another i tell you here's my thoughts on it so when we start talking about these topics and for example the hitchhiker theory from a if we're going to talk about from a demonic perspective then we have to factor in the distance from the location that the person had the encounter to their house right it's feasible for something physical like a dogman or a bigfoot to travel up to 50 to 70 miles to track a person down based on their scent. All right. So let's say you and I, the three of us decide we're going to go to Skinwalker Ranch. We go visit Skinwalker Ranch. We all go our separate ways and we fly away from there. I come way back down here to New Orleans. You guys go back to where you're from. If I look out my damn window in the middle of the night and there's a dog man looking in my window, that ain't no damn dog man from Skinwalker Ranch. That don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? That's something yeah. else. Now, somebody could tell me, well, you know, the dog men communicate telepathically, and he told his homeboy down in New Orleans, the Rougarou, he's like, yo, cuz, your boy came up here, and I need you to go down there and check that food. And he could roll up on me and be like, yeah, let's, what's up, homie? You want you want some smoke? That Okay, maybe that's that, right? <laughs> but, all right, let's bring it inside my house. So now, I came home, I'm laying in the bed, I wake up, and there's a nine-foot-tall dog man in the corner of my bedroom. That ain't no damn physical being i um i think there's a couple of things that 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 factor in when we start talking about cryptids from a demonic perspective a interdimensional perspective or a physical perspective if you take the physical perspective or the physical aspect and just leave it you know on the table let's say we got three figurines of dog man right uh, let's make it four. Four figurines of dog man, right? Let's take one. We move it to the left of the table. That's a physical manifestation. It leaves footprints. It runs around, all the rest of this. If you take interdimensional and demonic, you're just going to put them two together, one in front of the other, because if it travels through dimensions, you might as well say, you can might as well say it's demonic, right? And then on the far hand, right hand side, which is what people haven't come to the conclusion of, and I think I got this figured out, there is a legal aspect as to what they can and cannot do based on what you know your power is in the situation so there's been people who have prayed over their houses consecrated their land and they had all kind of dog man activity and dog man will come up to the edge of their property and stare at them and growl and they get aggravated and turn around there's been other people who i've spoken to who are absolutely afraid to go into the woods because they swear that dog man is going to kill them one guy in particular, he was like, man, I want to go. I want to go look. I gave him the coordinates. He said, bro, I know I can't go. I'm not a good person. It's going to kill me. And I said, what make you think it's going to kill you? Out of all the people it can kill, they got people walking around the woods all the time. 
I know in my heart I'm not a good man that's going to kill me. And after that, I, I started thinking, well, what makes a man good and what makes a man bad? And how, how did he come to this conclusion? And I started questioning more about things that he did and things he did in his past and things that he was like, well, you know, I haven't, you know, I've done very bad things. I never apologized to people. I've hurt people. I've done this. I know if I go, it'll kill me. If I go into the woods by Bigfoot, it'll kill me. And that brought me to the conclusion that there's a legal aspect of it. You combine that with the property boundary experiences that people have had um it brought me to the concept that okay there's legally there's things they cannot do and they can do um for example you guys have heard stories about people who go to a graveyard right they go to native american uh, burial grounds right and they see dog man and bigfoot and they get ran out of there if it's territorial rights that they have you come into my territory and if people say oh they're very territorial Okay, what is territory? That's legally, this is mine, bro. Get the hell out of here, right? Our household is our territory. They got their territory. And so you wonder why somebody can go and they'll be like, oh, there's the missing 411. And they went into this national park and they just came up missing. Well, I'm pretty sure they did because they went into the wrong territory and they got whacked. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You went to somebody's territory. It's like it's like bloods and crips. When it comes to it, in my opinion, like, oh, man, you went to the blood neighborhood and they whacked you. You shouldn't have been over there. Should have left them alone. You know what I'm saying? And then that's just from a physical perspective. But if you look at it from the spiritual perspective, which is what I've seen a lot of lately, because I've been given a lot of advice to do th things differently. You notice that when people understand the same thing you and I were talking, you guys, we were talking about before their dominion, you, they actually respect it. They sit there and say, no, okay, this guy, he knows I'm not supposed to be here. And they don't come back. The people who don't understand, and now that all this is yours, they ain't even supposed to be on none of this, they get run roughshod over. It's no different than the guys who've had dogman encounters and uh, on their property, and then they come out with a weapon, and they run the dogman off. I mean, they've had people, plenty of people who've done that. And they confront them, and they go on about their business. Same thing with Bigfoots, right? Um and then there's been aggressive encounters where they broke into people's houses and blah, blah, blah. And even in times, there were aggressive encounters where people didn't pull weapons on them. So I just think there's there's a legal aspect to what they can and cannot do. And they are well aware of it and we aren't. Um, what's your guys' thoughts on that? Have you ever heard that before? Uh, yeah, a, a few times um, I've heard of the where that people pray over their lands and either a Bigfoot, well, it was the Bigfoot that couldn't even, it couldn't cross that boundary, but it would stand there and just stare at, stare at the people from that boundary line of prayer or their, well, their, their land boundary line. Um, and as for, I don't think we know all the rules of the game either. I really think something's, there's a lot that goes on that we don't understand that they are either allowed to or not allowed to do to us. I think most of the information that I've heard on the matter is from this guy called dark waters. <laughs> and he taught me a lot about this stuff. You, um, I'll say this. Ooh, I just dropped my cell phone. Come on, bro. These things cost a lot of money. I'm gonna leave this in there too, guys. So everybody can hear y'all heard me drop my cell phone. <laughs> And, bro, I am horrific with cell phones. I will break one every month if I can. I'm telling you, um, it's to me, it's at a point where, and i give you another example, just for people listening. All right, so um, you and anybody want to try to experiment, I, before I tell you this, I advise you not to do this. But if you want to find out if I'm telling you the truth or not, do this. Go out. You got a printer. Print a bunch of photos of dog, man. I'm telling you, I wouldn't do it, though. But if you want to find out, do it. Print a whole bunch of pictures of dog, man. Get your little statue of a werewolf. Find your little place in your house and put them all there. Right? Then start listening to content 24-7. Day and night. Like, you treating it like it's some kind of God. And watch that it comes to visit you. Watch what comes to pay you a visit. Watch what happens in your dreams. Watch what happens in your... You start seeing shadows out of the corner of your eyes. And then watch when you start leaving out of the house at night and you start feeling like something's looking at you 
it's because you summoned it. You know how they say that the Native Americans say we don't talk about these things because we summon them when we talk about them? Those people are very, they're very, very smart, bro. They know exactly what they're talking about. And they understand, nah, we ain't going to talk about them skinwalkers because they, they come and they bring giant shadow spiders. We ain't talking about these werewolves because they come and they wreck shop. Um, it's you giving your attention to it. Um, and you giving your attention to it to a certain extent is entertainment. You going over a line becomes worship and it becomes a god to you and then therefore it starts to treat you like one of its subjects um and that could be either in the woods or it could yes be yes the yes did you think that dog water was going to give you the entire interview he just gave you an entire interview last night the rest of this interview is for members only if you have not become a member go to iamdogwaters.com and sign up today it is only twelve dollars a month and i know some of you may be saying twelve dollars a month that is very expensive but as i have explained to you already the price will go up when he brings his cameras in if i were you i would get in now he has been saying this since the price was 3.99 now the price is $12 and you have waited and waited and procrastinated and delayed. On top of that, once you sign up at this price, you are forever locked in at this price. If it goes to $1,000 a month, then you will only pay $12. Yes, yes. Listen to me when I explain this to you. Now is the time for you to become a member.